that I do that I think makes this a little bit different, and this is the point I could split the room, is I allow students to chat using lecture capture tools. So Adobe Connect has the option of a little chat box down the side that anybody with a laptop or a mobile device could log into anonymously and just participate in the room and anything that they put on in the chat box would appear in front of the audience. So just imagine that now, you could all log in. We were going to do this today, but we didn't uh, in the end, but you could, have, you could say whatever you like and all of us will see it. Now that obviously brings most academics out in a bit of a rash. Um, because of the potential um, difficulties that you might face with a group of unruly students who are not really in a learning mood. What I try to say is, yes, students need cultural change, they need to understand parameters and rules and boundaries. Once you get over that, you can actually get some really effective learning going on via these chat boxes. And this is just a, a blow up of one part, and it probably means nothing to anyone that has any interest in uh, uh, neuroscience, but we're talking here about ion channels, conceptually very difficult, and a student can stop and go, I just don't know what he's talking about, and write it in a chat. They don't have to put their hand up, they don't have to say, all right, I'm John, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. I know it's a really dumb question, they don't have to do that. They can write it here, and I can choose whether to stop what I'm saying and say, all right, I'll just answer that, or if I'm feeling particularly brave, I can just integrate my answer into what I was saying anyway and tell them that I've just answered it without stopping my flow. I don't like to keep stopping and starting. And I can encourage other students to answer each, each other's questions. So, you know, we were trying to get a flipped classroom. We were trying to get people to interact and collaborate and share information. This happens in a tiered lecture theatre and nobody's speaking. But we're doing lots of great stuff as I'm speaking. And I can make time and space whenever I want just to stop my delivery and say, oh, that's a really interesting conversation going on here. Let me just draw a picture to explain what you've been chatting about. Now, this isn't universally accepted as a good idea by students. 50-odd percent like it. Your problem comes when you get a student messing around. And the cohort population hate it. The majority are there to learn, and you get somebody saying, cough if you were at tequila night last night. <laughs> and you get their made coughing. And this, the whole group has lost concentration. They've completely lost it. So I have to stop. I have to get them back to me. And sometimes I have to go, you know what? This isn't funny anymore. And I just minimise the chat. And then I, I was really using that. It was great. So then I can just say, well, next time, before the lecture, talk to those people who are messing around, sort yourselves out, and we'll use it again. So you can drive culture change with them um, very effectively. Okay, so here's some data you can have a look at um, this. I think Julian's going to have a copy of the slides. Some of the evidence from the literature about lecture capture. It's all the sort of stuff I've been talking about already. 